This is Alex, uh, owner of ABR Houston. Uh, we're throwing this uh, N54 together. It's our Punisher Light series. Uh, basically forged pistons, uh, head studs, and a quality rebuild. Uh, they'll definitely hold some power, and if you want to go further than that, well, that's not a problem. Uh, this 2006 style engines uh, up have what's called an NG6 design, meaning it doesn't have a timing case, really. It's all one piece. Uh, I'm sure they did that to keep leaks away, but they come into a problem. Well, you've got to get the chains on the crankshaft. So what they did is they came up with this. And this is a hub. It's actually a hub out of our, our S55 M4, but it's the same, set, same system. Uh, and so they take this basically and cut it off the front of the crankshaft. And that will allow you to get it to come out. Now you can see that is the timing chain for the top of the engine and this is our timing chain for the vacuum pump and the oil pump but you got to get it on there so like I said they cut the front of the crankshaft off and they turn it into a stub and that way you can remove it from the front of the engine so you can service it or repair or whatever you need to do the problem is is well putting it back together again now this hub you would think would be keyed but it's not and you'd think that these would be splined, but they're not. So what do they do? Well, essentially, they put a little washer, which they call it a grip disc, and they put it in between each one of these, depending on the model year, they may be a little bit different. But they put all these together, and then they use that big fat nut, and they essentially, well, pinch everything together and hope it stays tight. Now, the N54 and N55 engines don't really have a problem, but well, that's the reason why this hub is out of our M4, because the timing chains have been slipping on the S55s. Now, don't worry, we've got a, we've got a design coming up. We're gonna have a permanent fix for it. But uh, for the time being, the N54s still have to be torqued, and that's what this big fat bar is here. So what this bolt does is it torques to 100 Newton meters, and then it has to be turned 360 degrees. It's called a torque to yield. Now, BMW has been using torque to yield for a long, long time, but it's very, uh, very prevalent in the new engines, especially with all these aluminum bolts. So all these bolts are one-time use, and they have to be torqued and then yielded, meaning, well, we torque to, let's say, 10 newton meters like, uh, like this guy, and then we have to turn it 90 degrees. Or these guys, or this one, you have to torque to 10 newton meters, I believe, and then turn 180 degrees. So... That's the reason why I have little marks all over everything to make sure that everything is torqued because we can only do it one time. I wanted to talk about front crank seals and what front crank seals mean to you. Now, this engine is on an engine stand so it's not in the position that it normally sits, but there's no filter housing gasket that goes along here. In fact, you can still see the, the mark from the original one. What happens is this thing leaks. Now, if we go, hey, Mr. Customer or Mrs. Customer, we need to replace this. What happens is, this engine sits at a slant and it leaks down and it gets all over the belt. Now the belt sits in this front area. When the belt breaks, it wraps itself around this crank seal and it goes into the engine. And you wouldn't believe it, but that guy, that timing chain and the chain that's in front of it, well, there's a big harmonic balancer that sits on the face of this. And when it wraps itself around, it kind of just sucks it down to the center of this seal and the seal gets compromise the belt goes through there and then the timing chain kind of acts like hungry hungry hippos and sucks it into the engine so then after it gets sucked into the engine and it goes through sprockets like that it gets chopped up like a blender and it plugs the oil pump up now if it plugs the oil pump up we're gonna damage the engine so recommendations an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure so that crank seal gets damaged because of that oil filter housing and if we don't take care of it, then we gotta take the bottom of the engine apart and get all the belt material out of the engine. And we've pulled out handfuls of belt material out of an oil pan. So, what I wanted to also show is for these DIYers that think they can do this front crank seal. Let me tell you what, this is not an easy task. And so, uh, basically, the reason why is the thickness of this crank seal. Now, typically, the thickness of a crank seal is, is about that wide. You can see how thick this is. One of the reasons why is this is a bed plate, that is the engine block. The bed plate and the block have no gasket in between it. There's a very, very, very small machined groove that goes along the perimeter of it, and it gets squeezed in through these little holes. 
and as it travels down and goes around it gets squeezed out between the two edges and that's where that groove is for actually is so the sealant can come out and that will com complete the seal but in order to remove it typically the seal is damaged now they've got a bolt system and I'm gonna pull it out of our little drawer here they've got this and what this does is it bolts to the crankshaft hub and then you have these little sheet metal screws and you screw it into the perimeter of the seal and it's supposed to extract it. The problem is though is the seal gets damaged. So the belt has destroyed it and well it has nothing to bite on. So we have this tool and essentially it's just a really big screw. And it goes on there and you screw it in and when you screw it in there uh, it bites into the seal and it removes it. If you don't use something of that sort partner let me tell you what you can damage this aluminum you could damage the seal surface on this crank hub now if you watched our other video on how hard it is for this to come out which also involves timing and everything else if you damage this crank seal uh, riding surface well you're gonna have another leak on your new seal if you damage this outside diameter here or you don't seal it correctly you're gonna have a leaking crank seal so the way this thing goes on is you're gonna bolt a special tool on like this and this will allow us to put a jig on. This seal comes with a protective sleeve and what that does is it helps ride the seal edge onto the crankshaft without damaging it. Now the actual seal surface of this is Teflon. That brown is Teflon. And if it's put on incorrectly or rolls over, well, the seal's damaged. So after we get our hub assembly on there, we get the guy on there to slide on. We use a cup, kind of like this, and the cup will then press it in correctly and flat and evenly uh, after we've installed our sealant on both sides on an engine that's been assembled. Now, this seal is gonna go in dry because I have not put the bed plate sealant in since this is a full motor build. So when I push the bed plate sealant through here, we'll see it ooze out on both sides and the crankshaft seal will be replaced. Our hub adapter is installed onto the front of the crankshaft. Then this slides over the face of it and kind of locks itself on there. We have to orientate the groove to the crankshaft, I'm sorry, to the block and bed plate groove like that and then we use a special tool to press it in this guy goes on like this and essentially it goes in well almost by hand And I'll finish tightening that up, and when this cup rides against the face of this block, then we know it's pressed in evenly, flat, and at its correct depth. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Or if you need an engine built, uh, give us a ring or an email. Uh, we're on Facebook, BMW Doctor, or Twitter, or uh, Instagram at ABR Houston. Uh, abrhouston.com. Uh, we're pretty heavy on the forums on Beamer Boost, and uh, we're all over the place on Facebook and their BMW perspective, like N5X uh, chat groups and things like that. Anyways, hope you have a great weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you later.